what's up okay so I've cleared up a little bit of space we have 17 minutes total so this video is about special rectangles the idea of this video is to show you and, and sort of demonstrate how one could use origami to build what I call special and harmonic rectangles so the first we're gonna go for is called the silver rectangle now as you might have seen from my other videos I am very much akin and I prefer that my origami be oriented towards the Islamic sort of traditional shapes now that is sort of my bias is not necessarily anybody else's and you know I just tend to you know use different rectangles for different constructions you know I'm not limited rather I think I'm just being informed by nature I think that these rectangles have a very sort of special relationship to the way things are right so we started by folding the typical now excuse me if I go too fast well, we are on on a sort of limit schedule so you can pause you can mute me whatever right so we started by folding this we turn it over I took that edge and put it on that edge right bisecting this line so if our right angle is half of pi right because you know half a circle or a straight line this angle this pi all of it is just half of pi now we're going for half of it that's a quarter of pi right this angle and then a half of that an eighth right 45 22.5 what sounds better 22.5 we're an eighth of pi I prefer the eighth of pi now that's just me call me what you want to call me I'm a radian I'm a radian kind of guy you know I think there are certain advantages to the, to the degree system there are certain advantages to the radian system for origami at least for this sort of very particular particularly geometric origami I feel that it's much better to use this so one more there we go now what I'm doing here is I'm just making really sure that two things are happening one the fold is originating from the point of contact with the fold with the edge right point of contact second thing I want to take care of is that the line falls on the edge there you see that the line falls on the edge that means that that fold which is falling on here it's going to be perpendicular to the fold that's falling on. So if it's falling on there, that means that this fold right there is going to be perpendicular to this line. So perfect. That way we're guaranteeing, because we live in a civilized society, right? We've grown, we've evolved, we have machines to make things in a very sort of big way, if you will. And that means that you know, we, we have right angles installed into our pieces of paper. What are you going to do about that? Nothing. That's the way it is, right? And well, I, I live in Mexico, so we have this very, very crappy paper that I do not enjoy. It's called U.S. Letter. It has no relationship to nature, no relationship to really anything. You know the thing it's related to? The American typewriter. That's right. This size comes from a machine which was built in the 18th century, and it's built to accommodate it. It does not, it does not base itself on any sort of ingenious proportion, no. It's out of convenience for a machine, and that the American way. But anyway, without too, getting too much on that tangent, this is called a silver rectangle. I folded that there just to prove a point. I get no no point, just to make you look at that. Now, this rectangle that it's inside of it has the same ratio as the full rectangle. Fun fact. Second thing, this rectangle in particular is has the properties of being one plus root 2. So I have here that the height is going to be also unit length, so this is 1 and this is 1. right? I, I established this by putting that edge onto a line which is parallel. right? So pop, matches, boom, there we go. So same, these two lines are the same, line, line. The diagonal line of them, according to Pythagoras' theorem, if this is a right angle, this must be the sum of these two areas, or like the square root right? Of these two were squares. So one plus one, that's two, diagonal root two. I can take the remainder, I can fold that and rather take that and show you that if I fold that onto it, like so, that it falls exactly on the end of that fold. And see what that means, what that does and proves is that by congruency, I have established a similar uh, congruency. That means they are the same between this remainder and this line. So these lines, these two lines, line ta, ta are the same. If this is root two, then this is root two. 
And because these two points are collinear, these two lines, this line and that line is collinear, this is 1 plus root 2. Establish the silver rectangle. Way to go. We can, uh, if we had more of these, we could then show how this builds an octagon. This is actually built inside of an octagon. So we're going to put this aside for now. Special rectangle number one. Check how much time we got left. We got about 12 minutes. All right, cool. Second special rectangle is called the platinum rectangle. Now this one is more, it's not trickier. It's sort of like built on the same premise of, of using the angles in order to construct it. The thing about this one is that I discovered this looking at these papers, these academic papers on quasi crystals, right? So, okay, so before I go on the, on the explanatory tangent, I take my corner, I put it on the fold, and then I slide it, right? I put it there, I'm sliding, slide, 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 until, of course, I hit my corner there. Boom, hit the corner. And I fold that, fold there, fold that, down and out. There we go. Okay, so yeah, reading about crystals and crystallography and all this. Now we bisect. And there was this mention that well, what, what was revolutionary about the quasi-crystals was that they included symmetries which were prohibited. It was a study of crystals which showed a prohibited symmetry, forbidden symmetry, which was that of 10. That was the first one that they found. And so in the study of these, they found that there were like these analogs within like the study of certain tessellations and patterns. One of them being, of course, the Penrose Rums, the Penrose Kites, and then Sokolar and Steinhardt, other scientists that did the study patterns, came up with several sort of analogs, if you will, in the 12-fold family. Now, what they found was that there were these things called the Amen bars. Now, that's one of the most interesting and profound concepts for me. That's one of my favorite things. I don't understand it fully, but I know about them. They're called the Amen bars, and there are these decorated lines, straight lines that you can like draw inside of your shapes. And when you connect them or like put the pieces together, if the line does not make a straight line going forwards, then you stop. So same thing here where we did, you know, I'm bisecting here. I can take this away. Now this right here, this fold. Now again, we said half of pi. Now this is fold dividing into thirds. One, two, and three. One, two, three. So if a half is divided into thirds, now these are six. So this, each of this is sixth of pi. So this is a twelfth of pi. This angle is a twelfth of pi. So where that line hits, that's the line where I'm folding my perpendicular. Now, you must excuse me if I'm all over the place with my explanations and going really quick, going pop, pop, pop. I don't care. This is the way it is right now. This is what I'm feeling. You know, this could be a podcast. So anyway, the MN bars, right? And yeah, so in this paper, they were analyzing the tw uh, several octagonal and the decagonal patterns. It was published in 1987, I believe, this paper that I was looking at. I believe maybe 86 i forget the name of the author i owe you that one but you can like comment comment and subscribe and like but yeah comment if you want to know the name by by the time you comment i probably should have access to it but if you don't comment then i probably just forget it and think like eh they weren't even listening so it's fine so maybe you know maybe you will be the first person to hear this you go into the comment section and find that there was no mention of it. You're like well i guess nobody cares i guess it don't matter and the idea is correct my friend it don't matter but see, that's the thing of the wonderful thing about nature. Like it's still there, even if you don't care about it. So on that line, I did another perpendicular and I stretched it. And I keep cutting. See, I, I went a little overboard there, a little overboard. So I'm course correcting, going on the other side. I'm cutting over there. Notice also how I sort of redid those cuts, the, those folds. Up, 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 boom, out it goes. Now for a long time, you know, I've been dealing with, with shame. Okay, so this one, this platinum, so that's the thing I was building up to. The platinum ratio. This is called the platinum ratio. This is two plus root three, okay? So what that means is that there must be a two, a two, and the height of root three. So because, you know, several mathematical things. So here's how we construct like a square, right? So this is a square, so that pretty much guarantees that over there. This one goes down here, that pretty much guarantees that over there. And so now I'm saying that as between here, we have an equilateral triangle. So let's test this theory out. Let's get this puppy a test drive, right? Going for there to my other corner over here. That's good. That's nice. 
So that was the first time I thought it was referred to as a platinum ratio. Turns out it didn't call the platinum ratio. Turns out it was in another paper, so I'm referencing nothing really. But that's the thing, like it's it's sometimes called the, the platinum ratio and it's like it's not official. Like that's the silver, there's the golden ratio, but then there's the platinum ratio, and this is it, right? But it's a weird one. So you don't really hear it referred to as such that much, but it is the name of it. Or you can call it a 12-fold rectangle, I guess. Now here I'm just a little doing a little trick just to guarantee that you know the line is going through the other side. I could also fold it in half. Yeah, that's, that's a solution. So see, this is the line that I was looking for, this one. But so I, that's what the one I, I used a little trick in order to get a little a little folding technique. You know, you can fold all day, and then all these sort of sort of become accessible to you. Like, how do I get that angle? How do I get the fold? And they will come. Trust me. So here we prove that you know these three angles are the same. Pretty much guaranteeing that congruency, that all that niceness, it's all good. Yeah, I hope you're staying safe and sound and whatever. You gotta take risks in life, though, son. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? It is what it is. You just gotta, you know, you just gotta be mindful. Just be mindful. So yeah, we see that two equilateral triangles. Let's just prove that they are actually equilateral triangles. So I'm just gonna take. I'm gonna do a little fold just to mark that square. Just where that line hits, the line there hits, boom, boom. That should be the edge of my equilateral triangle. You can see it better now, like there. I'm just gonna take this edge and then just put it, no, rather this one at the bottom, because that's the one in the square, and then I'm gonna put it on there, on that edge. And if they, well, I can see that they're the same. It's clear as day. This and the line that goes to the center, by congruency again, are the same. It should be the same on the other side as well. So we've proven, by, by you know by by congruency and sort of elimination that we have one two and the height of root three because there are going to be two equilateral triangles the equilateral triangle uh, oh my goodness something died inside of me the equilateral triangle if the unit length if the the edge length of the triangle is one then the height of it is going to be root uh, root three over two let me just write this down so if this is one then from this point to this line the height of it is going to be root 3 over 2 but because there's two of them right it's gonna be root 3 over 3 here as well root 3 over 2 so we combine them because they're both halves so now we have that these two are root 3 that's a horrible 3 that's a better 3 1 1 so 1 root 3 1 so this is 2 plus root 3 this is that rectangle. So we've constructed the silver, the silver rectangle, the platinum rectangle. Now we're gonna go for the golden rectangle. Let's see if we have time. We have five minutes. Let's see, let's get it done, guys. All right, cool. Now the golden rectangle is one plus root five over two. So the key clue there is the root five. So first we need to sort of limit our space a little bit. Now I'm gonna do a little fold. I'm gonna be a little cheeky. Because I'm, I'm going to cheat here, because I know if you do this on an A4 paper, you should have no problem. But because I don't have an A4 paper, I'm going to have to cut a little bit, make my rectangle bit a little bit longer. See, my, my full rectangle is a bit longer. Good for me, good for me. All right, cool. I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to get uh, this going on. This is square. Right. So in order to get root 5, I need to have two squares piled up on top of each other. So again, so with this, I'm just going to open this up. Let this not distract you. I'm thinking only of this rectangle. I won't cut that away because why bother? I put that there. Right, so I've pretty much just like done. So now I have it here. Now I have my rectangle is here, my, my, my height. Right, this rectangle has a height of 1 to 2, so the diagonal of it is going to be root 5. So what I can do is I can take this point, which is where this ends, right, that ends there, and then I can take that. Again, excuse me if I go a little bit too fast, but I, I'm crazy. So there we go. I put that from that point, and put it, make sure that it hits on the top there. So I could also fold the diagonal line and put it on the diagonal line, but I'm gonna, just gonna go for points now. So I'm just making sure that it actually originates from 
that line making sure that's very important and then the edge has to match over here in the top very important as well now I can use this I can just do this fold just to match just to have like a little reference idea of it so when I unfold <clears throat> I have where it hits right I have the point where that is hitting so therefore I can use that point as a reference now to do another perpendicular line so when we fold the line on top of another line, that's how we get perpendicular lines, right? I don't know if I, this is take three of it, so I don't know if I missed that. Uh, so yeah, this is maybe the hardest bit, just making sure that things are actually perpendicular. Now if your paper is big, it's way big, this is harder than it looks. This is way harder than it looks if your paper is big. So it's, it's cool that we're working with something that's handheld right in my hand the size of my hand I think there's a name for it there's a name for the sort of like design that's built around the hand like doorknobs and remote controls and that kind of thing electronics handheld stuff there's a name for it you guys know about Poe's law that Twitter thing that if you exaggerate or like make things something people won't be able to recognize it oh we got one minute left holy Jesus we can do it guys now why do we have a minute because my phone is full of stuff that's why. So if I did this correctly, this is 1 because this is the height of 2 and then this is root 5 because then this is the same as that height. See that? Root 5 diagonal from here to there. Root 5. So we have the collinear 1 plus root 5. Therefore, this is 1 plus root 5 over 2 because the height is 2. So this is the golden, silver, no, platinum and silver. We have our three special rectangles here. So thank you very much for joining us. Catch you in the next one. And yeah, do the thing you do and yeah, keep doing it. Thank you.